Thank you for watching. My name is Glenn Morgan, and this is We the Govern. If you like our video from last week about the Department of Ecology, believe me, it gets even better. So last week we were doing a video on the Washington State Department of Ecology. And specifically, I had actually gone up to their campus and it's about 30 minutes from my house and I was taking photos on their campus just to document the toxic waste pile and the pollution that they were allowing right in their front yard in their green spaces. And this included open pit latrines on the Department of Ecology campus, bike chop shops that were there and all kinds of garbage strewn everywhere, which included the disposal of small engines, battery acid, oils, all kinds of stuff like that dumped in the environment right there in their front yard. Outdoor garbage burning, which was occurring in fairly wide scale, big pits right there in their front yard again. And these endless piles of hazardous drug needles, which were piling up on their campus. And of course, meth lab chemicals that were obviously being disposed of out there and just massive collections of garbage pits, landfill scale operation there right in their front yard. And the worst part about it is that this is what you could actually see of these toxic waste piles and these homeless junkie camps and the garbage that was spreading everywhere. This is what you could see right outside their front window. So every employee that went to work, the Department of Ecology, drove right by it. They drove right by this. This included the director, Laura Watson, who was appointed by Governor Inslee. Everybody came by and who went to work there at the Department of Ecology or EPA or the Conservation Commission, which also shares office spaces in the same building, they all drove right by the same toxic waste pile. Well, well these agencies are going around and they're suing farm owners and uh, landowners all around the state for the potential to pollute. This is what the Department of Ecology actually does in their own green spaces, in their own campus. It looks like this. So that hypocrisy was so obvious and so stark, it was really necessary to document it. And I do have some news on this front because it's a fairly big deal. There's been a victory in our request to actually get this place cleaned up. And the Department of Ecology finally got around to removing point source pollution, which means the source of all these pollutions, the garbage piles, everything else that they had been dumped, allowed dumped on their own property with their own negligent nonfeasance. They just decided to let it pile up there and they'd actually cleaned it up. And so now when you go into the woods, same place I took photos, this is what it looks like now. You see these cleared areas in the trees. I sent somebody else up to take these photos again, just a couple days ago, but this is what it looked like while it was still being cleaned. You can see the excavator here in the truck as they're taking, because this was an industrial scale operation. All kinds of garbage were piled, was piled back here. And you can see some of it was bagged. The more toxic stuff was bagged and prepared to be removed. And you can see piles of it here. So this is good news. The Department of Ecology, after many years of just willful negligence and you know a negligent uh, nonfeasance, just decided to ignore the massive toxic waste pile in their own front yard. But they finally got around to kind of cleaning it up, which we're happy about because the ending slide in our video last week was asking the director, Laura Watson, will you just clean up your own backyard first? And so it looks like they've taken that message to heart and they're actually doing something about it, or at least they actually did something about it. Now, what's kind of funny about this, it was right after I did this story, after the video came out, they initially, internally at the Department of Ecology, a lot of the, there was a lot of buzz, and of course, I have a lot of employees that work there who are whistleblowers, and they called me an illegal journalist who trespassed on the property, as though that really changes the message that I had. After all, uh, who could uh, ever imagine a journalist actually going out and actually doing some journalistic work and reporting on what's actually going on in their community? The Department of Ecology was very upset about it, their senior management was very upset about it, and they were very frustrated that anybody dare expose the hypocrisy sitting right there in their front yard. Then, of course, the second thing, the bureaucratic uh, shift the blame game occurred, and they said, hey, that's not our property. That's the Department of Enterprise Services. Hey, it's their fault. Let's point the finger at them. Now, this is kind of classic because the Department of Enterprise Services, if you're familiar with them, at the, uh, they're the ones who actually manage a lot of the state properties all over Washington State, and that includes the state capitol, for example. And just a few months ago, I had a fairly significant run-in with them. I have an article here that uh, Enterprise Services was the uh, group that Governor Inslee was using, the bureau bureaucracy on the Capitol campus, to tell people that they could be arrested for daring to commit free speech by bringing a microphone and speakers and a generator to run the speaker system. And they had threatened many people with arrest for that. And I knew that was illegal. I knew there was a lot of court cases that showed they couldn't use those types of restrictions to suppress free speech. And so I formally notified them in February that I was gonna go commit 
an act of free speech on the uh, Capitol campus and specifically and explicitly violate those rules that they had said and they could arrest me for it. I knew it was a perfect free speech case and enterprise services credit, they did back down and they recognized that the constitution exists both at the state and federal level and that you do still have free speech and they decided not to arrest me and they decided to change the rules to apply to everyone else moving forward. So I'm not a defender of enterprise services. I recognize that when an agency does something right, in this case they did, but I wanna point out that it's not really fair, or and it's actually kind of absurd for the Department of Ecology now to claim and shift the blame to the D Department of Enterprise Services, claiming that they own that property when it was actually the director, Laura Watson, and all the other employees that worked at the Department of Ecology and the EPA and the Conservation Commission, all these people drove by this toxic waste pile every day and they did nothing about it for years, for years now. And so whose fault is that? It's the Department of Ecology, the very entity and agency that we supposedly expect to actually protect us from in the environment. That's at least what they claim that they're there to do. Now, my favorite, favorite excuse that they're using right now is that, hey, that pollution isn't really toxic waste. It's just municipal waste or chemical spills. And it really just isn't that bad. This is actually what Department of Ecology senior management is actually saying internally. And you can see it already seeping out to some of their public information officers. And this is how they're trying to get around this whole story and try to pretend like it's just not that bad. I mean, look at this. This isn't that bad. And that, I mean, that's not that bad either. And look at these engines and all the chemicals and garbage that's being dumped into the wetland at Woodland Creek right here. All that, it just can't be that bad. It's not that bad. It's just the Department of Ecology green spaces. This is how Department of Ecology manages it. It's not that bad. Oh, but wait a second. Let's go back to what the Department of Ecology actually spends its time doing, which is harassing farm owners or people like this, saying that they have the potential to pollute, and because of that, it justifies extreme litigation and harassment and all kinds of litigation, just like they're doing in Whatcom County right now, just like they've done in Kittitas and Clown County and Thurston County, all over the state. But because these guys right here, after all, this has the potential to pollute. Let's go after them. Let's devote state resources to harass these people. And by God, anybody that has a horse 600 yards or closer to a stream, that's the potential to pollute and that is worth throwing every available resource that the state has. But of course, in their own backyard, the Department of Ecology believes that this, this right here is the good management of green spaces. So to really put this in perspective, you have to look at where the Department of Ecology is located in the greater scheme of themes in Thurston County and its relationship to South Puget Sound, which you can kind of see here in the upper part of this map. And Ecology is located right here. And that's their little toxic waste pile that they've allowed to pile up there. And all of the groundwater and surface water runoff that comes from that place all flows out here to Henderson Watershed. And that's pretty significant. It goes right into Puget Sound, right into the shellfish beds, right into the salmon stream right into the wells that pull water out of that watershed. And the, it's hard to, for people to really understand unless you get a little better historical perspective. The Henderson Watershed Protection Area was actually established not that long ago, and it was really set up in theory to protect the shellfish uh, shellfish area, and they call, that's why they call it a shellfish protection district, mostly as a tax grab for small property owners who had septic systems so that they could, they being the, the county and the state, could actually charge more for their septic systems and impose more fees and taxes on them. And I actually testified against this a number of years ago. Meanwhile, well, they're arguing for this special district to be set up so they can tax people and they can impose all these kinds of rules on them. The Department of Ecology is just letting this massive toxic waste pile occur in their front yard, seeping down to the watershed, out into Henderson Inlet, and of course, affecting all the wildlife that live there. And the significance of this and the hypocrisy is just ridiculous. Of all places, the Henderson Watershed Protection Area, the Department of Ecology supported this, promoted it, and endorsed it, and yet this is exactly the place where they've decided to show us how not to manage your land. So with the, you know, now that they've actually made some effort to recognize that they need to clean up their own front yard, there is no, there are no more excuses for the Department of Ecology not to get back and do the right thing. And this really starts with the fact that they need to cease to destroy any of the records and communications that are related to carrying out this cleanup, their failure to clean up employee complaints or city complaints over the previous years. I know the city of Lacey has been pressuring the Department of Ecology to actually get this thing cleaned up, and the Department of Ecology has been resisting it for a long time. And I have records requests in with the uh, city of Lacey. I don't have all those records yet, so I just know that that's been going on, and the Department of Ecology has been refusing to do it. And I'm nervous, right? 
right now, and I want to formally put them on notice that they can't be going out and destroying this because that would be considered spoilation. And since there's likely to be some kind of litigation against Department of Ecology for being the largest polluter in the Henderson watershed, they need to keep these records uh, intact so that uh, we can actually figure out exactly what they've been doing and why they've been refusing to clean it up for so long. Secondly, uh, they do owe an obligation to officially notify all downstream well owners, property owners, anybody that had kids playing in Woodland Creek or anybody else in the area about their potential long-term pollutions to this watershed. The stuff that's been dumped there for many years has seeped now into the watershed. And they also really genuinely owe an apology to anybody who's uh, downstream from them and uh, let them know that uh, the Department of Ecology is going to promise to change their polluting ways. At least we assume and presume that they're going to do that. That's really important. Now, in addition, there's an actual federal law that requires them to report illegal, uh, any kind of illegal uh, spills and the pollution from the Department of Ecology to the local community. And it's actually under the Emergency Planning and Community Right to Know Act, and there's also another act that applies to this. And the Department of Ecology is obligated to notify these people, in addition to that just being the right thing for them to do, they're obligated to notify them about just how significant this pollution event was on their own property that they chose through negligent nonfeasance to just allow to occur into the community. And I think that's pretty important. Additionally, um, we should ask for and require them to do surface water quality, full spectrum testing, soil sampling, and all t other types of testing for compliance with the federal and state laws regarding the Clean Drinking Water Act for the next five years. And this is actually also important because we really don't know yet just how badly polluted either the ground or the uh, surface water or the watershed itself, how much uh, is gone down into the aquifer based on the actions that have occurred on the Department of Ecology's property. And we can only figure this out if some substantial testing is being done. And that needs to start right away. We need to find out exactly how bad this is. In addition, there's a legal requirement that they need to report all uncontrolled releases of toxins and other hazardous wastes uh, regard and regarding the Comprehensive Environmental uh, Response Compensation Liability Act. And this is kind of the Superfund Act at the federal level. And they need to report all these because uh, we don't know yet how significant the liability is and how significant the pollution event has been. And since Department of Ecology and the EPA sat there and watched this happen the whole time, um, they're going to have to report this just like they make anybody else report something that would happen. They should be investigated for possible withdrawal of authorization uh, under the solid waste and hazardous waste rules because under this act, actually, uh, they don't seem – they've demonstrated that they don't know how to manage uh, these uh, obligations and they are officially licensed by the federal government. They're given permission to manage hazardous waste and solid waste and they're clearly demonstrating they don't know how to do that on their own property. So how can they be given permission to manage that any further? And so some effort to remove that responsibility for from them or put them into some kind of a supervisory role where they're on kind of detention for a while because they can't be trusted uh, with that type of responsibility as they've demonstrated with their own property. And finally, any of the testing uh, must be conducted by any outside entity which is not supervised or influenced by the EPA or the Department of Ecology due to organizational conflict interests uh, because it's always possible and, in fact, almost certain that they would probably falsify some of these test results for political purposes, for self-preservation. It's kind of embarrassing that they did this. At least they should be embarrassed by it. And uh, we can't allow them to then control not just – uh, the enforcement of this, but then testing to see just how bad it was. It's obviously a conflict of interest, and we're not going to allow them uh, to do it themselves. We need to make sure it's somebody that's not tied in with these agencies. And finally, the, one of the questions that has come up with a lot of community members, and this is the one that I think that we need to start preparing for and addressing right now, is has ecology harmed you? Because if you're downstream from the Department of Ecology EPA campus building, you may have been impacted by these uncontrolled releases of toxins, chemicals, and pollutants, both into your drinking water, into the green spaces, into the environment and the shorelines, all the way out into Henderson Watershed. Certainly, this is far more significant than the worst of the worst claims that they ever made about any kind of of septic system somewhere back deep in the watershed that might have leaked at one time. This, what the Department of Ecology has done, is substantially worse. If you've been affected and you think that it's possible that you're on that list of people who've been harmed and the Department of Ecology never warned you about the pollution that they were allowing in their front yard, 
please make a point of contacting me and I'll try to help organize this. I'm not certain that litigation is going to occur, but it seems likely. And it's better if I start organizing some of that now, just doing the right thing, collecting this information today. And, of course, we haven't even really gotten to the fact that there are fish. It is Salmon Stream, Woodland Creek, which is where all this garbage was being dumped right up into. Woodland Creek is a salmon habitat. And according to the Department of Ecology and state and federal fish and wildlife, it is a critical habitat that is necessary to facilitate the salmon and their habitat. And that has been where probably the lion's share of this pollution is gone. Regardless of whether people individually having their well water being uh, damaged, it, we don't know how much pollution that this has actually caused in the salmon and the fish that are in that stream. And in theory, they are supposed to care about this. Which probably makes me wonder if the Department of Ecology perhaps might be trying to consider modifying one of their uh, slogans and maybe changing it to say that uh, to recognize how they've actually been living as an environmental agency versus how they want us to imagine them being. Earth Day is a celebration of this beautiful planet that we call home. But it's not just a celebration, it's also a call to action, right? It's a call for all of us to do what we can to leave this planet at least a little bit better than we found it for current and future generations. There's so much that ecology and its dedicated workforce does each and every day to restore our earth. Our mission is to protect our water, our lands, our air, and our climate. And we do that through restoration of habitat. We do that through our cutting edge research. We do that through recycling. And we do that through respect for equity because having a good, clean, healthy environment means having a good, clean, healthy environment for everybody. Every Washingtonian deserves that. I guess I'd say to everybody out there, let's all work together and let's do what we can collectively to leave this planet a little bit better than we found it. Thank you for watching. If you like what you see here, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and share it with others. And if you want to learn more, go to wethegovern.com and you'll get all kinds of other stories about the Department of Ecology and plenty of other things that I've been writing about over the last number of years. And remember, for those who care about our community and who want to be more engaged and involved, the future belongs to those who show up.